over to the jump art. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in jump art, you kind of turn into a fall fast, uh, fast faller. Excuse me. God dang, my dyslexia. What the heck? <laughs> but you, um, but you know, you, you turn into a fast faller though. So obviously you can jump really high, but you fall really quick too. And for a character like Wario, he's certainly going to be looking for that, because you know Wario is a character that can certainly combo some pretty insanely high percents too, despite BU being at some of those later percentages. I mean, also it's just the benefit of your opponent is in jump mode at the ledge. They probably want to jump because that makes sense as their best option. So uh -huh. being on top of that, really good play. Okay, Buster's online here. He's about to try to shop up some shields here. Oh my wow. goodness. And they hit him off stage because he didn't have his bike. And so that, uh, since he could not recover because you have to wait so um, a certain time frame before you can respond to another bike, he was pretty much dead right there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, jump back online, but unfortunately he finds himself at the receiving end of a backer right there from my man Simon. Good stuff. Yeah, Isman doing an amazing job just calling out when Nico feels comfortable jumping off stage and punishing it time and time again. That's what's keeping him in this game despite that early game. Oh my. Playing the floor is live, but that upper is certainly a move to be reckoned with. Okay, trying to find a short hop near approach to turn himself into something. Now, that does go to the speed. Now, with speed, if I'm not mistaken, he gets better aerial drift here. So, let's see how well that fares uh, versus Wario. There's a dash tech, but no down tilt before, though. Yeah. Down tilt dash tech is usually some of uh, Wario's better uh, better combo options. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you're dead. No, he air dodges right back up. Barely is Mon holding on to that stock and doing a great amount of work now on Nico's second stock. But here's the trick to take out Nico in a single solid hit because he still has shield online. So if he gets caught with an up tilt, he can switch the shield immediately before the waft comes again. Can we talk about, oh, oh, but then drops the smash R at the last moment, man. That's some booty. That is booty. I know, I know he was looking for that. Oh, okay. yeah. Try to go for the drop down uh, air slash. Little misposition nonetheless, though. Smash, or excuse me, not smash, but the speed art comes back out here. Percent dead even here. 0.4% differential between both of these two players. Okay, couldn't quite get the money slap. Oh my god, goes for the backer. Didn't have to waste the waft. And now things just became that much more dire here for Nico, but there's the backer to clean it up. You're right, the Rod, the waft is still on deck, and he's gonna have to watch out for that so carefully over the next few percent. If he gets caught with a sour hit and error and up tilt around like, you know, 30, 40%, that could be it. Not ready to swap the shield immediately. No, sir. For Hobnair once more. Okay, getting out space here. And I like that. He understands that, you know, Shulk has ob the obvious reach advantage on Wario. And so his utilization of parry has been really good in terms of trying to find access points in here on Shulk. But the jump online, but not for long. Though. What's he about to switch into? There's another parry, though. Oh, yeah, smart stuff switching over to shield. Scary though, because now shield's not going to be online. If, si if Ismon finds himself his opening, there's no way that Nico can survive it. But Isma is actually not looking for it too much. Trying to find something. I love that. Uh, Nico throws up his shield because he knows there's no confirm it's a waft off a of grab. Yes. And so I think uh, Isma knew that. And so he went for falling up here to try to find it. You know, the good uh, the good maneuverability away there. Allowing him to live for a little while longer here. There's the Nair. The shield immediately. He doesn't waste any time there, G-Pick. Smart stuff there. Avoids the bike. Oh, oh, he's oh, 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 Just oh. like that. And oh, that you're was... nasty. That was all the fear from the early switch to shield by Nico, right? The fact that he went early and then immediately turned off shield because he recognized he didn't actually stop a kill confirm from coming together. That is my new. Once again, I find my up tilt, I find my my confirm, I kill him instantly with waft. That's right, man. That's, and that's the scary thing for uh, for Shulk because in most matchups, you just go to shield in neutral when you're at high percent, and you can just get away with that and just live for a really long time. But you specifically need to have the threat of switching to shield to keep you alive against Wario's confirms. That's right. What do we get here, man? So we move yeah. into game number two. So right now, obviously Nico not switching anytime soon. This time going for Buster fresh out of the game. I know in the last game, I think we seen jump. Uh, which obviously wasn't wasn't the worst option in the world, but I think he's just trying to put some damage on really quick, and he's doing a phenomenal job at that. Air slash right out of shield, man, to keep Wario out. There's the jump right now. Ismon, though, showing in a lot of respect, but if I'm not mistaken, the hands have some weird property on up tilt from Wario, right? Yes, they're it, invincible. It's really weird. Yeah, they're just like damn invincible. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're just solidly invincible things that last for like 11 frames. One of the best anti-airs in the game. And the, the fact that you can combo off of them into kill moves makes them fantastic. Yes, I really like Wario's anti-air up tilt, and I like uh, uh, Simon and Richter's forward tilt too, man. Like, pivot forward tilt can just stop anybody from jumping in for free. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's another parry, though. Switches right over into the shield as opposed to trying to jump away. I don't know right if he them. wanted to be in shield right away, but we'll take it, though. It was to protect himself, right? He saw the up tilt. He knew he could be moments from death, and that just avoids any mix-up. There's no read that Ismon can get on a shield shulk that kills shulk. Yeah, I think my biggest concern was like moments where 
I don't know if he knows that he can jump out, you know, for free as opposed oh, yeah. to switching into shield. Like, you don't want to burn shield too early, but you also don't want to try to jump out into a confirmed combo too. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, that's where the foggy stuff of top level play comes in, right? Everything feels uncertain and, and, and unsafe. Okay, down tilt dash attack, bread and butter Wario stuff. Ooh, another dash attack, no down tilt that time. Use the backslash right into the back there, mind you, too. Obviously doesn't, uh, doing, excuse me, different damage as it hits the back. There's the forwarder, though. Hovering the ledge get up by Ismon. And at one, ooh, dead. there we go. I want to point out that when uh, Nico was falling earlier, right, he switched to, uh, to Steven Auto because that improved his air drift. And that uh -huh. way he was able to get away from being juggled by Ismon anymore. It's a really it nice is. stop. That's oh. right. Uh oh, Border off the ledge and then the up tilt once more. This man is the parry master. So scary. And God damn. That's the important thing to have on deck against Shulk is all of his horse sword swings, as big as they are, they're all single hit, which makes them very parryable, and there is a noticeable windup to them. So as you get used to watching Shulk jump in the air, you just know the rhythm that his air is going to come out. You can parry it over and over again. And every stock that he takes while he has walk makes the stakes that much higher here for my man Nico. Okay, 49.3% in climbing. There's the forward two. I like that the empty hop right to trying to bait out a, a excuse me, an air dodge there. Yeah. Uh oh, up air once more. Nice, switches into speed. Looking for some air drift here. Obviously, looking for some combos to try to take my man Isman off stage. Oh, oh, bam! Dead. You have got to make sure your conversion oh. and your approach options are that much better than your opponents because he knows that because he has the sword and because he's so long, he can see his approach options coming from a mile away, and he goes for the parry every time. Yeah, and that is actually so huge that Isman's uh, fully charged waft. He didn't kill Nico. We've been so scared of that this whole time. And because that was the t difference breaker in the previous game, Nico can actually walk away with this if he just keeps matching Ismon pace for pace. Okay, let's him back on. Uh -uh. No short hop back here for you. Gets the air slash out to the magnifying glass. He goes, though. Ismon, Wario, such a heavy character here. The great thing about this, though, is that the bike is active. So if you can get Wario a far enough distance off stage with this speed arc, he might be able to make some magic happen. That's smart right there by Ismon to get rid of the bike immediately. He knows that he's going to need that. And I hope I'm not talking too loud that I'm coaching because you're sitting right by me. <laughs> you know what, Rod? That literally didn't even occur to me. But we have themselves matching each other bit for bit in any case. And these are such good players that, you know what? They're used to dealing with loud people in the audience just yelling stuff. That's right, man. Oh, Nair. Okay. Shield Art immediately gets the immediate grab because he fell right in front of him. Nice. Buster. He's going to put some good damage on, especially at these low percents. Fam, that did 49. That 49. was a two-piece off a of grab, what? Uh, look, I'm from the hood. I know about two-piece combos, man. Like, I go, <laughs> I go to the local chicken joint. I ain't never had a combo as good as that, man. I did 49. <laughs> oh, and then speaking of anti-airs, though, we've been talking about Wario's up tilt. Shulks, though, is also such a great force. We saw him just doubt absolutely anything that Ismon could have done from above him. Yes, sir. And Nico's looking for it again. Yeah, just using up tilt to thren those platforms, trying to catch Ismon sleeping. Okay. Trying to catch a jump in with the turnaround forward tilt. My man Ismon, though, looking really good. There's another back here, though. He's at these dangerous percents here. The smash art is online in the up tilt. Doesn't even get the red stuff there that time, G-Pick. All he got was the up tilt, and that's all he needed there to close that out. He got himself a set here. That was so beautiful, too. That up tilt covering the entire length of the directional air dodge by Ismon. Cheering Nico that extra game, tying them up 1-1 apiece, but Ismon is actually making this such a strong contest for SoCal's number two player. Yes, and the great thing about uh, Nico is that, you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, intelligent players out there, top level players, but, you know, Nico is probably among some of the most intelligent because yes. he plays Shulk at such top level. He's very well aware of the matchup spread. He's very well aware of what he can do and how the matchup switches depending on the arts. So I know that he's certainly playing this uh, Wario matchup, you know, to the T. But, you know, at the end of the day, Wario has some very unorthodox options, some very unorthodox setups, and because that up tilt obviously has invincibility on the hands, you have to watch how you try to jump in on him. I do like the Smashville pick coming out from Ismon as well, right? Earlier, Nico barely survived a walk because of the large side blast zones of Pokemon Stadium 2, so he's taking instead Nico down to the, one of the smallest blast zones instead to make sure his waft is always going to kill when it comes together. Uh -huh. The scary thing is that Nico's edge guarding is phenomenal, so if he follows Ismon deep off stage, he can just corner carry him to death into the blast zone. Every time. Nice, air slash once more right out of the shield. Some very quick and strong options here. Obviously, it's the buster, so he's not getting as much knockback anymore, but here's the smash. Now, I believe in smash, you trade actual damage put on for just knockback, right? Yes. Correct, yeah, yeah. 
And so with that in mind, it certainly lived up to the expectations. There's another parry. The empty hop right into the up tilt, man. Every parry that this man Ismon gets, he just gets the most off it. Oh, get clapped. And oh! Oh, that was supposed to be run off air. <laughs> that was definitely supposed to be run off air. He was supposed yeah. to go for dash attack right there. Oh, stealing the double jump. Ismon forced to go for his up special a little bit early, but uh, Nico not able to capitalize with his buster, but he still manages to get a couple good hits in. Wait a minute. Oh, just sharking underneath the special platform. Nico throwing up tilt. The battle of the up tilts, really, when it comes to the, their control in the juggle game. That's right. I think, though, uh, Nico obviously gets a lot off of up tilt just as uh, Wario's kind of floating over him, where Wario can just kind of throw up tilt as they're both grounded and make magic happen. So, obviously, there's some glaring differences, but I don't think enough to really sway the meta for the most, or sway the matchup, excuse me. Yeah. Double down tilt. Nice. That was so slick. He just did a, uh, Isman did enough shield pressure to make Nico want to escape, and then dash attacked, reading the jump out of the shield. Really good stuff. Like I said before, Nico's gonna have to watch how he jumps here versus Wario. If it's not the dash attack, then it'll be the up tilt. Like, Wario has a lot of anti-air options. You know, even looking at him back in Brawl, like, he spent so much time in the air, it made this character that much harder to fight. There's the dare, though. You're dead. Yeah, that, just like you said, the bike on stage, Wario does not have access to it. And we have an attempt by Ismon, I think, to get rid of the bike so he could get it back online, but it just fell short of falling off the stage. Stopping it from eating it, but he blows up himself, though. The waft, up till, ooh, up air, ooh, ooh, the parry. Yeah, yeah, and you see, right, the moment that Ismon sees shield up, he just kind of dips, he just waits for shield to go away, because now he knows he can find himself a kill if he gets that one up tilt again. Oh no, he's gonna have to lock him up. Oh no! No way! You're a, you're a bad, you are a bad man. Ismon, you are, bro, you are nasty. He's nasty. He was frames away from bringing this to a dead even game, but now it is in Nico's bag. Especially with 100% now on the opponent, only 65 on Schultz. Nico's doing solid. Here it is. There's the back says, oh, but then this, oh, I hate when that happens, man. I know Nico does too, but regardless, Ismon that much closer here to trying to even this thing out, if not possibly taking the game at 113%. Oh, but he has to smash star. All he needs is one solid hit, man. Wario, he's cooked. Yeah. Having a lot of attempts to catch air movement, and Ismont is just holding his ground at the end of the stage, just having faith in his parry ability. And going to his shield mode, just dealing with the uh, potential of the huge Wario follow-ups we know off of up tilt by throwing off his whole weight distribution entirely. About to do and it there. Oh, wait. It. Forward smash is going to do it. The rawest forward smash I've seen in a minute. Nico ends up taking it game three against Ismont, but what an amazing showing by Ismont. Definitely a player to keep on your radar if you're not doing it already, guys. I know I am.